my name is Nicole and welcome to my channel. I haven't made a video in over a month and it's just been killing me every day slowly because I love this and I hate not being consistent with my uploads. But I think after two months of steady schoolwork, I have established a pretty good schedule to separate, you know, schoolwork and making time for YouTube videos and social media and things like that. But hopefully I stick to it. My hair is also blue now. It was pink when you last saw me. Although I love the pink hair, I think blue feels more myself and especially this shade, like this nice darker shade, I really like it. And um, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> in this video, I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I read in August and September up to today, this morning basically. Today's October 5th, so that's a lot of books to cover. Hopefully this video isn't too long, but I'm going to try to breeze through all of these books as quickly as possible. And yeah, let's just jump right in. The first book that I read in August was the audiobook version of Sabrina and Corina by Cali Fajardo and Steen. This is a short story collection of indigenous Latina characters. Each short story is unique and each short story explores a different theme that Cali Fajardo uh, wrote about or explored. Some stories were pretty dark, but others were pretty nice. I think there were some with happy endings, but a lot of them were kind of dark. Um, it was a very powerful collection of short stories. Some stories I enjoyed much more than others, and I gave this overall four stars, which is a really good rating for me, but I think because I read it as a an audiobook, I couldn't really grasp every single thing that I liked or disliked in each short story. So I think in the near future, hopefully, I will acquire a physical copy of this book, go in, reread the short stories, pick out my favorites, and then highlight and annotate some powerful lines that were in it because this collection was definitely powerful. The next book I read you were probably tired of hearing about, but you shouldn't be because it was amazing. It was The Vanishing Half. I gave this book five stars. It was just perfect. I really, really enjoyed this book so much. It was the first Brit Bennett book, Brit Bennett book that I have read, and I also read another one that I will talk about later in this video, but I just think that she's a genius, and I love using that word to describe authors because it's just true. Like, they know exactly what words to use in what order and how to create a great atmosphere and setting and how to make a reader care about characters that are fictional. So The Vanishing Half is about two sisters who were um, born in this predominantly black town, but they kind of try to uh, marry lighter skinned people to kind of erase their blackness, which is disgusting, but that's where it takes place. And it is the 1950s when it starts and when these two twin sisters run away from town. One of them goes off to live her life as a white woman. Um, because they're both light-skinned, they are white passing. But the other twin sister runs away and marries a black man and she has a black daughter. This twin sister returns to their town and the book kind of just follows them trying to figure out what happened to the other twin sisters. It also kind of in the middle of the book breaks the narrative and it starts to follow their daughters. And I won't say anything further, but it was just great. It gave me a lot of Celeste Ng vibes, especially like the whole family drama um, or yeah, family drama story plot. It was so interesting. It was a huge page turner. And please, if you haven't picked it up yet, definitely do so because it's a worth it. <laughs> The next two books I'll be talking about are Shakespeare plays, so as you know, my boyfriend and I would read them out loud, like kind of reenact them on Friday nights. We haven't done so recently, but I hope we start again soon because I really enjoy Shakespeare's tragedies a lot more than the comedies. But we read Romeo and Juliet and Macbeth. I loved both of these. Romeo and Juliet was so dramatic at times, it was kind of funny. Um, Hannah from Snow White Reader says it best like it's a satire for sure and then Macbeth was just like perfect spooky vibes if you haven't read Macbeth yet or you just don't remember it or you're interested in it I definitely recommend you read this for the spooky season right now it was pretty spooky like that's a pretty good descriptor of Macbeth it is a little gory if you're not into that maybe you might not like it but I think to really capture the true essence of Macbeth, an audiobook version of it would be 
perfect. The next book I read was the audiobook version of Over the Top, A Raw Journey to Self-Love by Jonathan Van Ness. I gave this book four stars. It was really, really great. The audiobook is narrated by Jonathan, so if you're a fan of Queer Eye and if you're a fan of Jonathan Van Ness, this would be a really enjoyable and pleasant read. And if you know anything about him, you know he's a very confident person and he's just proud of himself and he shows a lot of self-love, which is great positive energy to look at, you know? Um, but as the title of the book suggests, it is a raw journey to self-love because he wasn't always like that. So again, if you're a fan of him, um, this is a really good book to understand how he actually got to be who he is today. And if you are someone who's struggling with self-love or confidence, I think this book will just help you a lot <laughs> to discover your own way of being confident and self-loving. And because of that reason, it was a four-star read for me. I'm not sure if he read he wrote it or like a ghostwriter or whatever, but like the essence of Jonathan Van Ness just comes out in the story, in the way that it's told and written. And again, because of that, I think it was just a really, really, really great memoir. This next book is also a memoir. I listened to the audiobook version of Brown Girl Dreaming by Jacqueline Woodson. This was a five-star read across the board. I think a lot of people will agree. It was phenomenal. Um, Elizabeth Acevedo was the first person to uh, introduce me to books written in verse. And I didn't know that Jacqueline Woodson did that too. And when I picked this up on audiobook, I noticed that it was written in verse as well, and it was a memoir. Um, it was beautiful. Jacqueline Woodson, again, is another genius writer. She's so, so good. But this is definitely a book, although I gave it five stars, I would have enjoyed a lot more if I read it physically, just because there were some really powerful lines as well in this one that I want to refer back to. It was great. It was great to learn about Jacqueline Woodson's life. I had read in July If You Come Softly by her and I actually read another book of her, of hers, which I will talk about in this video. And it was really, it was really nice to learn about her, especially to receive that information in verse. It was, it, it kind of hit harder. You know what I mean? I recommend this if you've read anything by her. It it's great. The next book I read was uh, my second Brit Bennett book, and that was The Mothers. This one was a four-star read. It wasn't as um, page-turning for me as The Vanishing Half was, but it was still so engaging and so interesting. It's another like family drama-esque book. It basically is about this uh, girl who's grieving over her mother's suicide. She gets pregnant by the pastor's son. She has a best friend who's God-fearing Christian and you know, I won't say anything more, but it essentially follows these three characters through their lives and how this one incident kind of just follows them for the rest of their lives. It sounds a little boring, but again, Britt Bennett just does a great job in making us care about the characters. It explores um, race, classism, and a lot of uh, religion, I guess. I'm not a very religious person at all, so I couldn't really understand some of the religious references, but they were sprinkled in there, and yeah, it was it was great. Like, just read Britt Bennett. She's just amazing, okay? That's it. The next book was a memoir by Julie Andrews, and I listened to it on audiobook. It was Homework, and this is actually the second memoir by Julie Andrews. It follows her life in Hollywood, and I only picked this up because Julie Andrews and she narrates it and I, of course, would love to listen to her voice for like, what, 14 hours? I don't know how long this audiobook was, but that's truly the only reason that I picked up this audiobook. I did give it three stars because it was so long, like, okay, Julie Andrews, we love you, we know you've done so much, but damn, girl, it was long. And she kind of goes off and talks about um, specific people in her life that I don't even know who they are. I, ju I just read it because I care about Julie Andrews' life and I like her stuff. So whenever she like went off and talked about a specific person, I kind of didn't really care that much. Um, and that's the only reason I gave it a three star. It's well written and of course narrated by Julie Andrews. It's incredibly enjoyable. So if you're a fan, I recommend it. The next book is the third Jacqueline Woodson book that I've read and it was Red at the Bone. I gave this book four stars. It also falls into like the family drama-esque category. Um, I think I have a thing for those kind of books. I think Celeste Ng definitely 
definitely made me enjoy those with um, The Little Fires Everywhere and Everything I Never Told You. Those, that, those two books, this book and the two Brit Bennett books kind of fall into that same category. Um, but Red at the Bone is about this 16 year old girl. It starts at her coming of age ceremony and then as a book progresses, we follow all of the people in her life and we kind of like every chapter is kind of starts back in i don't know when but i'm not describing this well hold on so it starts with a 16 year old girl at her coming of age ceremony and then each chapter we read about the history of a different person in her life and how they got to be where they are that day does that make sense? So each chapter will be like her uncle, her dad, her mom, her grandpa, her grandma, things like like those kinds of people. And then we go back and we learn about the history of that person and how they ended up at that coming of age ceremony. Um, again, Jacqueline Woodson questions a lot of things in this novel, like classism and race and even sexuality and all of that stuff it's such a short book and it's kind of written like in a poetic way not really in verse but it's a an incredibly quick read but it's a very powerful one and yeah Jacqueline Woodson is definitely one of my favorite authors now that I've read three of her works they're all phenomenal the next book I read was the audiobook version of Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia I gave this book three stars I think I just had way too high um anticipation no expectations for this book because it was so hyped everywhere um i definitely loved it if you haven't read it yet this is definitely the perfect time to read it and um chanel from chanel time has a book club her crusty book club and they're actually gonna read it for october if you're interested if you love chanel which you should because she's great drop in her live show at the end of the month but mexican gothic is essentially about a young girl whose cousin writes a very weird eerie letter to her and her dad and her dad is basically like you should go to mexico and check on your cousin sounds like she's in trouble and it's like okay i didn't really question it a lot of people had problems with like that aspect of it but i was like hey i guess it's like part of the times i think it's set in the 1950s i'm not sure but um uh, People were weird back then. The atmosphere was great. It was super spooky. I really liked it. I did listen to the audiobook, like I said. I think um, listening to the audiobook in this case added to that spooky atmosphere, so I do recommend the audiobook. I think the biggest problem for me was like the ending and the reason for why all these spooky things were happening, which I'm not going to spoil. But yeah, that kind of just felt like, eh, I was, I was underwhelmed by the ending but the whole book was incredibly enjoyable and a three star isn't a bad rating. Um, it's actually a good rating, so yeah. I still recommend it, I think it's incredible. I think a lot of people have enjoyed it for good reason because it's, it's just really, really good. The next book that I read is one that I have been anticipating for a long time and that is Felix Ever After by Casey Callender. I gave this book four stars but honestly I think it's more 4.5 because it was just so well written, it was beautiful. Um, you've definitely seen this book or heard about this book somewhere and it just it holds up. It's incredible. It's beautiful. Beautifully written. Case and Calendar is great. I really want to read more of their books. I think they have like a beautiful middle grade book that everyone has read. I forgot the title, but I'll include it here. I really want to read that one too. Felix Ever After follows the main character, Felix Love, who's a transgender boy in high school. The book basically centers around this terrible thing that happened to him at, at this like summer uh, program where his uh, pre-transition photos and pre-transition name uh, his dead name are exposed to the public. He is just set to find out who did it and that was fun. Like as I read it, I was trying to figure out who did it. Um, I would have never, I didn't guess who did it and that was fun. Uh, but it also explores a lot of themes of being transgender and family issues and friendship. And But the what made this book really good for me was the way that Casey Callender wrote these teenagers I'm not a teenager anymore, so I don't know how they are today, but I was a teenager once, so I'm talking like I'm like 34 years old when I'm 24. Anyway, 
I liked how Case and Calendar wrote teenagers. They they weren't too angsty. They still did teenager stupid things, but everything was realized. The one thing I didn't like was a little miscommunication with Felix and his best friend, but all the friendships in this book were just felt real and really great. I love this book. It was great. It was also a huge page turner. I finished it so quickly. I thought it would take me a while because it's kind of big. I have it right here actually so you can see like how thick it is but it was it was great. Please read this. I after I read this I tried to read two other books which I guess I'll talk about. Um, I tried to read A Song Below Water and You Should See Me in a Crown. These two books I waited months for from my library and I started to read them and it just put me in a huge slump because I think Felix Ever After was just such a great YA novel that I have been holding other YA books at such high um, expectations and I shouldn't be doing that because it's gonna definitely hinder my reading of other YA novels, but that's just how good it was. The next book that I read was the audiobook version of Stamped by Jason Reynolds. This is a really short audiobook that I read in like less than half a day, like really really short, maybe three hours if you speed it up a little bit. But this is essentially a small compendium? Am I using this word correctly? It's just a kind- it, it says it's not a history book, but I took it as one, but it essentially covers the history of racism in this country, in America, and the audiobook was really great. It was a really great production, like I recommend the audiobook, it's a good listen um, while you're doing things because it just keeps you focused, you know, like some audiobooks aren't that great because you can just doze off, but this one was just concise and to the point, and I think um, it would be a good recommendation for people who aren't aware of the history of racism and who are trying to explore um, it and trying to make themselves anti-racist every day. So yeah, I definitely do recommend it. Oh, and I gave it five stars, duh. The next book deserves its own video because it is now my favorite book. One of my favorite books of all time. <sighs> okay. I have to like compose myself when I talk about this book because I just get really emotional and like really attached to it. Oh my god. That's Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Delia Owens. It's so good. It was it was so good. What else do you need from me? Just read it. Just read it. Should I make a video about this book? Probably. As you can guess, it was a five star read for me. <laughs> oh my god, this book was absolutely everything that I needed especially because I've been so absorbed in my schoolwork and um, if you don't know I'm getting my master's in hydrology and I'm working a lot in the Everglades here in uh, South Florida which is basically a swamp marsh area and this book is set in the swampy marshes of North Carolina. It follows essentially a young girl who is abandoned in her little rundown shack in the swamp and she's basically just left to grow up by herself and the person that she becomes is so great and I'm really emotional! <laughs> I'm gonna start crying. I don't know why I felt so connected to this book because I... I don't know. The, the loneliness that was expressed in it was so heartbreaking and the way that the main character was written just felt so genuine and so real and can you hear my voice cracking? I hope not. <laughs> Every other character in this book just was so lovely and so nice. <sighs> but then there's also a murder that happens that we're trying to figure out, um, you know, we're just trying to figure out who did it. So it, it kind of um, goes back and forth to following this little girl's life to present day trying to figure out who killed the famous boy in town. I think I'm gonna have to make a video about this because also the copy that I read is a library's copy and I don't want to give it back. I'm looking at it right now. It's on my cart to turn back into the library. <sighs> I want it. I definitely have to reread it, go in, highlight, annotate everything. Just read this book. Okay, I'm done. I have four more freaking books to talk about. Let's go. Let's finish this, Nicole. The next book is Julie Andrews' first memoir. I listened to the audiobook of this again as well because Julie Andrews narrated it. This book was okay. 
I think I gave it three stars. Yeah, I gave it three stars, but I definitely enjoyed this one more than the Hollywood one, which is something I didn't expect. This one was just felt more personal. It felt more like we're finding out more about who Julie Andrews is, where she came from, and it felt so much more intimate. Even the audiobook production felt more intimate, like her voice was a little softer and a little shyer and a little nicer, I don't know. I love her voice, it's so lovely. That's about it, it's just about like um, her whole life like being born and then going up to um, her first Hollywood contract, which is where the second memoir picks up. Yeah, if you're, if you're a Hollywood fan, what? If you're a Julie Andrews fan, I do recommend the first one uh, more than the second one, but yeah, it's just about Julie Andrews. That's it. The next book is a thriller. I am trying to read more thrillers. I think I've only read two or three now. The first one was A Woman in the Window. I really liked it. I gave it four stars. I know not a lot of people liked it, but I do think it was a good thriller. But it was also my first one, so maybe that's why I liked it so much. But I read Lock Every Door. Is that what it's called? No, that's not the book I'm talking about. I'm talking about The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. I gave this book three stars. It was good. I listened to the audiobook and it was good. It was good thriller vibes, you know, but I hated the plot so much. Like the twist pissed me off. I don't think I like daddy issues books. I'm just tired of this trope being used as like a device. I'm tired of it. I want it gone. I don't want to hear about it anymore. I don't. It happened in Beach Read, it happened in this book, and it happened in another book that I'm going to talk about. So whatever. I gave that three stars. I don't know. Thrillers are not doing it for me. I should probably just read the ones that the cat from Paperback Dreams has enjoyed and Larry because reading these other guys mm -mm, they're not doing it for me so the second to last book i'll talk about is know my name by chanel miller i listened to the audiobook of this and it was incredible oh my god i think i i'm glad i read the audiobook or listened to the audiobook instead of reading it physically because she narrates it and towards the end I heard her voice cracking as she was saying things while I, I was crying already and then I heard her voice cracking in the audiobook and then I was like destroyed. I was just destroyed. I was laying in bed staring at my ceiling listening to this audiobook and just sobbing. If you don't know, Chanel Miller was the victim of a sexual assault case that you probably heard about back in 2014. Um, this nasty dude, Brock Turner, assaulted her at a Stanford frat party and you probably know the details already about that case but this is her memoir and it covers um the entire process of dealing with a rape case which was just sounded excruciatingly long and so annoying and it just it shows the problems with the system in this country and how it deals with rape victims. It's great. You definitely should know her name. I know you all know Brock Turner's name. Um, the thing with Chanel Miller was that she remained anonymous for a really long time until I believe two years ago. She finally came out and showed her face and showed everyone who she was. I'm really happy that she wrote this. It probably wasn't easy for her. Um, I could tell that even her reading the audiobook was a little hard and I don't blame her. I also think that she's a great writer, like this is incredible. I don't know if I said it already but it was a five star for me, it was great. Um, Cindy from Read with Cindy also read this book and she talks about some of her favorite quotes from that so go read, go, go read, go watch this video of hers where she talks about the book because she does, she does it justice. Okay my god! <laughs> The last book I have here is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. Um, again, this is a thriller novel. I literally finished it this morning. I listened to the audiobook. It was cool. Uh, two different narrators for the two different perspectives, daughter and dad. But like, this was a two star read for me. It wasn't enjoyable. It wasn't, I didn't feel the spooky vibes. I wish I did. It was okay. Like. Again, Cat from Paperback Dreams literally released a video today about this book, which was exciting because I had just finished it. So I went and watched it and yeah, we share similar opinions because 
the whole like being in a haunted house vibe was cool like the house being haunted and stuff was 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 spooky but it was really cheesy for me to be honest like a lot of lines were just so cheesy i was like am i reading this right now like why is it so cheesily written and that just made me not enjoy it it was really slow um towards the end it picked up a little bit and it got kind of spooky so that's why i gave it two star because it was kind of scary the twist though i did guess um near the like middle of the book i kind of guessed who was doing the things and the it, the way it unraveled wasn't that wasn't that fun for me so it was just a two star i'm not having a great time with thrillers right now but yeah that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you've stuck around this far, go ahead and comment a pumpkin emoji if you have access to one. I am really happy and I hope that I can continue to make more videos because these are just so fun for me. I love it. I love it here. And yeah, that's about it. Thank you so much again and I hope you have a great day.